This video is about the opening of epoxides with acid and water to give trans dyes. I'll give a generic example first, follow up with a few more specific examples, and then finally do a detailed walkthrough of the mechanism. So in this reaction, we're starting with an epoxide and we're adding aqueous acid that's often written H3O plus or sometimes H2O and H2SO4. And our product here is a trans dial. Now the thing to remember about epoxides is that they're cyclic ethers they're three-membered rings, and they have a tremendous amount of ring strain. If you think about the internal angle of a triangle, which is essentially how we've drawn our epoxide, the angle there is 60 degrees, and which is very, very far from the ideal angle of 109 degrees for a tetrahedral carbon. So for this reason, epoxides are extremely reactive towards nucleophiles. And one example of this reaction is this treatment of epoxides with aqueous acid, where We've opened this up and we formed a new carbon oxygen bond. If you look at the list of bonds that we're forming and breaking, we're forming carbon oxygen. We're also forming an oxygen hydrogen bond, uh, actually here, and we're breaking a carbon oxygen bond on the epoxide. And we're calling this a trans dial because if you examine the stereochemistry of this epoxide, we're starting off with carbon oxygen bonds, which are both wedges. And notice that one of the carbon oxygen bonds has remained a wedge and the other one has become a dash. So in other words, it's inverted. And this is due to the fact that we'll talk about later in the mechanism, this reaction undergoes, a, the epoxide undergoes a backside attack in order for it to open. And this backside attack leads to an inversion of configuration. Okay, let's talk about some specific examples here. This is about the most simple example you can imagine with an epoxide, it's a three, carbon unit with an epoxide on it. No stereochemistry is noted. And when we treat this with aqueous acid, we're going to obtain our diol here. And like I said, since no stereochemistry is noted in the epoxide, we can't denote the stereochemistry of the product. Although this is a stereocenter here, so this would be a racemic mixture of uh, enantiomers. This example is a little bit more complicated. We have a six-membered ring here with a carbon on one end. and when we treat this with aqueous acid, let's look closely at how the stereochemistry changes. You notice we've got the carbon attached to the methyl group. This is a tertiary carbon. And we carbon on uh, the other part of the ring, which is a secondary carbon. And notice how the stereochemistry of the secondary carbon remains a wedge, remains a wedge, whereas the stereochemistry of the tertiary carbon has gone from being a dash, sorry, from being a wedge to a dash. So it's undergone inversion of configuration. We'll talk about this in the mechanism step. The third example shows another example where we've got an epoxide. Look at the sides of the epoxide. One of them is more substituted than the other. And notice that, again, it's the more substituted end, the end of the epoxides attached to the more carbon units that ends up undergoing inversion of configuration. Notice how it's this carbon, where it's gone from a, a dashed bond between carbon and oxygen to now having a wedged bond between carbon and oxygen. Okay, so inversion is always occurring at the more substituted carbon. And if you want to think about this uh, in terms of analogies to reactions you may have learned previously, this is a little bit like Markovnikov addition to alkenes, where it's always adding to the more substituted carbon. So we'll talk about that right now with the, with the mechanism. Okay, so walking through this mechanism involves the three distinct steps. Uh, the first step in this mechanism is we're, we're taking our epoxide and it has lone pairs on the oxygen, and the lone pairs are somewhat nucleophilic and we treat our epoxide with acid, the lone pair on the oxygen is going to donate a pair of electrons to the hydrogen of the acid, and we're going to end up with uh, a protonated epoxide. Now, we, the interesting thing about protonating an epoxide, or indeed protonating anything, is we actually end up making it a better electrophile than it was before. So whereas epoxide wasn't necessarily so reactive by itself beforehand in the presence of water, here we're adding acid. And this acid is key for this reaction in that now we can set up a second step, which is nucleophilic attack of water onto the epoxide. And the important thing to note here is that the oxygen is attacking the more substituted end of our epoxide. And notice that we're forming a bond here in arrow C between oxygen and carbon one. Now, why does it form a carbon uh, to carbon one and not to carbon two? Well, protonation of that epoxide, oxygen, has going to weaken the bond between carbon and oxygen, and we're going to form a partial positive charge on one of these carbons. We're going to form a partial positive charge on the carbon which is best able to support it, and that is going to be the more substituted carbon. And for that reason, 
oxygen attacks to the more substituted end of the epoxide here. So now this has to occur with inversion of stereochemistry. So when we go further down, we see that we're forming a carbon-oxygen bond uh, with now the stereochemistry has gone from being a, a wedge to now it's a dash. And so we've done an inversion of stereochemistry. The, the O, which had been the H, which had been protonating the epoxide, has now gone from a positively charged oxygen to a neutral oxygen. The oxygen of the water, which is attacked, has gone from being neutral to being positively charged. So there's just one last step to do, which is to go from having our positively charged molecule to a neutral alcohol, which is what we want to have as our final product. And this is done with one equivalent of water, which can act as a base. So water can come in with its lone pair of electrons, take a proton away from our protonated uh, alcohol here, and in the process, we'll form oxygen-hydrogen bond, we'll break a hydrogen-oxygen bond, and we'll be left with our trans dial. Now, there's just one little thing I want to mention here that, that um, notice that I've, I've got HSO4 minus here, note it at the, the counter ion of, or, or the, the ion that accompanies H3O plus. Now, there's nothing special about HSO4 minus here, it's just that I have a real aversion to drawing ions without uh, pairs because they always come in pairs. I don't want to ever show something which is un an unbalanced equation. So I, I put in HSO4 minus here to, to show that this was uh, a balanced equation. Notice this is totally a spectator ion. It does not participate in the reaction at all. So there's many other ions that could have performed this role here. I just chose to put HSO4 minus. It could come from sulfuric acid. So in summary, we're protonating the epoxide. We're making it more electrophilic. Then we're adding into the epoxide through uh, attack of uh, water, which then leads to inversion of configuration. We're breaking open the epoxide to form an alcohol, and then we're deprotonating the protonated alcohol to give our neutral trans dial. And that is really all there is to it. If you have any feedback or comments or questions about this reaction, I would absolutely welcome you to leave a comment in the space below. And thank you for watching.